Alright guys, what is up? Today we are working on the Shinsen Miata once again and uh, just in case you haven't seen any of the previous videos on this car, um, this was a car that I bought from Copart. It was wrecked, it's got salvage title um, and I replaced a bunch of the front end bumpers and stuff and um, it is in pretty good condition now. Um, the only thing is, I never painted the front end um, and it's just been driving around with black fenders and a black bumper for quite a long time. So. Um, off, after all of the success that I've had painting the Z, you know, I'm finally ready to go ahead and dive into this um, and just see what happens. I can always get it repainted again in the future, um, but all the supplies for this were like $175 or so, um, so it's fairly budget friendly. Um, I'm sure I could have got it painted at like a professional shop for six or seven hundred. Um, I think I was quoted that roughly, like, but that was like a year ago. And there's also a lot of wait time, and I don't want to have to wait for this. I want to do it now. So what we're going to do today is paint all the pieces. You can see I've already taken them off. Um, I've got a fender here, a fender here, and the front bumper there. Now I'm just kind of mocking up the area right now. I've got these two sim screens that my family had, and I think I'm going to go ahead and hang the fenders on both of those. I'm going to drape them in plastic and then hang them on the top. Um, kind of just like how they're hanging on these, um, just off this top sill right here. Um, I might go ahead and lower those down a little bit just so I can get them. But I want to get them up so I can get like around the inside of the fenders really easily and at the bottoms very easily. I didn't want them too low. Um, and then I think we can go ahead and use these Rhino ramps for the bumper. So, um, basically I'm just kind of setting things up right now. But we need to go ahead and make sure that these are nice and clean because they have been on the car. And let me see if I can come over here. You can see they got this kind of like, I don't know, sheen on them. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to wash this up, and then we're going to hit it with a tack cloth, make sure it's all nice and clean. Um, we're going to do the inside and the outside, even though we're not going to be painting the inside here. Um, we want to make sure it's clean so it doesn't accidentally contaminate anything else. So, um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and take these outside, give them a pretty nice wash, and then we'll uh, see how it goes from there. All right guys, we just got done washing them and you can see on the fenders there's still some like water spots and everything from just sitting outside over the last year or so. Um, but we're probably gonna go ahead and hit this again with, I don't know, some isopropyl alcohol or something before we do a tack cloth, just see if we can get any res any residual stuff that really didn't come off um, out of there. You can see down here where the side skirts cover um, is still the nice black color that it originally was. So um, we'll see if we can kind of get some of that off and then the bumper is still kind of drying a little bit. There's still some water on it, um, but it's doing pretty good. Uh, I went ahead and just took a cloth and kind of wiped off all the top here. I'm letting the heater under there kind of dry the underneath side. Um, but this has seen, um, you know, about a year's worth of dust, debris, and rock chips. Um, so, let's see if I can find a good spot over here. Um, right there, you can see there's kind of a lot of plastic um, that's coming up. So, I don't really know exactly the best way to deal with this. What we're going to be using on this bumper, because it's plastic, we're going to be using a plastic adhesion promoter. And basically what that is, is it's a spray that kind of melts the top layer of plastic actually. And then instead of spraying like a primer or something on, you just go directly to the uh, color coat. And then the color coat actually makes a physical bond to the plastic. Um, so I'm hoping that when we go ahead and spray the adhesion promoter on here, um, that it actually physically melts down some of those spots and kind of helps it kind of smooth out a little bit. Obviously, I'm not sure if that's what's going to happen, um, but I don't think we want to put primer on here. I think we just want to go straight to uh, color, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then if I need to redo this in the future, um, I won't feel too bad about it because it'll look good enough for what it is, you know. And so it's a project car still, um, despite being probably the most put together car that I have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit those with, I don't know, some IPA or something else, see if I can get those spots off. And then uh, we'll get to, I think, I think we'll probably do the bumper first. The adhesion promoter, you have to spray it and then immediately color it. Um, if the adhesion promoter dries, it kind of re-hardens that top layer of plastic. So I think we might go ahead and do the bumper first and then move to the fenders. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, guys, we got a layer of primer on both of these fenders. You can see they have a nice primer look to them. Um, I haven't done anything with the front bumper yet. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put some color on these two now. I'm going to probably put plastic over this. So you can see there's already some primer dust on it. Um, I'll just put a layer of plastic on this, put some color on these, and then I'll clean this guy up with some IPA and the tack cloth. And then, um, and then I can go ahead and put the adhesion promoter and color on that as well. 
Um, I think if I did this first, um, I would get stuff on these and I don't want that. So I'm gonna do these and then I'm gonna do that and uh, hopefully it comes out really good. So let's see how these fenders turn out. All right guys, so I went ahead and got the first round of color on there. I do have a mask on in case it sounds kind of weird, so I apologize about that. But uh, let's look over here real quick. You see all the metallic in the sunlight right here? There's quite a lot of metallic in here, so you definitely want to be wearing a respirator like I am, um, just because you don't want that in your lungs. But overall, this came out really, really good. These panels look really, really nice. The only issue I was running into is sometimes when I would shake it and then go ahead and spray again, I would get like little stuff that flung up from the can itself and then landed back on the paint. Let's see if I can show you, like right there. So the thing is with metallic paint, it has like the metallic flake in it as well as another kind of paint part to it. And so if you kind of get it wrong, what you end up with is like the paint base and then, which is more liquidy and not any metallic flake in it. So you can see all those are dark spots. That's the paint base. So the really, really the best way to do is just kind of give it a second to set and then uh, dry a little bit. And we'll go back over with another layer of paint and that should go ahead and correct it. Um, you can see just, there's a lot of little ones on this panel all over there. So this is gonna be something that I have to work on. That one came out really, really good. This one, for some reason, this section right here, every time I'd go over it again, uh, I would just get more of those little dots on it. So um, overall, not too bad. Looking really, really good. I'm happy with it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and let these dry up. And then I might go ahead and um, move them to a different room or something when I do this one. That way I don't get any overspray on them. We'll see how it goes. I just wanna put another layer of paint on that one to see if I can cover up those weird spots. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you can still hear me. I've still got a mask on, but uh, I went ahead and waited about 45 minutes to an hour um, just for the paint to kind of dry up. And then I was also reading on the paint cans here. Pull this up for you. Uh, right here, it recommends if there are any imperfections in the paint, uh, make sure you be sanded with a, ten, a 1,000 or higher grit sandpaper. So I did have 1,000 and 1,200. So I went ahead and grabbed a 1200 grit right here. And then I put some water on it. And I just kind of went and lightly sanded all of the areas that had issues. Uh, I haven't wiped anything off yet. So this is all just the actual paint that was sanded off with the water. Um, so this one has a bunch of little areas. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up with a nice uh, rag. And then I'll probably hit it with a tack cloth one more time. Um, this one I only found, you know, like a few really small just imperfections that I really wanted to fix. So, it is looking really, really good now. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off. Do one more coat, be really careful. <laughs> Try not to do that again. Um, and then this will be ready for clear in half an hour after that. All right, guys, just look at these panels. They are looking so, so good. All the sanding and the repainting, it came out just perfectly fine. Everything looks really, really nice and uniform. Um, I don't have any splotches like I did before. Everything looks really nice. So it is ready for clear coat. I think I'm doing these two. I'm gonna clear coat them, give an hour to dry or something, and then move them into a different room, and then I'll go ahead and tackle the bumper. I just don't want any contamination between these two hitting each other um, with the adhesive promoter and everything, adhesion promoter. Um, I just don't want that getting on these and causing any issues. So these guys are going first. Um, the furnace unfortunately just kicked on, so I'm gonna have to wait until that turns off because if you guys don't know, spray paint is flammable and you don't want, um, this is at least a gas furnace. Um, you don't want an open flame near it. Um, ideally, you wouldn't want an enclosed space like this garage either. Um, the reason that I'm okay with it is because I do have some filtration going on. Um, if you guys saw my Z video, you probably saw this, which is just a big filter taped to a box fan. Um, and it's actually surprisingly catching quite a lot. Um, it, but I think this is probably the last time for me to use it. Um, I used the same filter on the Z. Um, it got pretty, the, the white on the Z has kind of a yellow hint to it. Um, so I saw it get pretty yellow. And now you can see it is pretty dark and um, very reflective from all this stuff that's been in this metallic paint. Um, so that's been filtering the air. I also have the window up there cracked a little bit with another fan pulling air in. Um, so I do have some filtration in here, but I just wanna make sure that I'm not getting, you know, sending all this paint fumes anyway into the rest of the house. So once that turns off, we'll go ahead and hit these with some more uh, clear coat, or just some clear coat. 
um, but they are looking really, really good. I'm super happy with how they're turning out. Um, this is paint is just coming out really good. It's so nice and uniform. Um, I'm always scared when doing metallic paint that you might get strips and bands. You have to be really careful when you're doing metallic not to oversaturate one area when you're painting because it can cause like drips and runs and drips and runs in metallic paint are super duper visible. Um, I don't know if you've ever done it before, um, but you can really see where the metallic kind of like slopes around in that little line. Um, so be careful when you're doing metallic paints. Um, but guys, this is looking really good. Uh, once the furnace kicks off, we'll go ahead and put on some clear coats um, and then hopefully that should only take an hour or so to dry and we can move these into another room and tackle that front bumper. All right guys, well I just finished the second coat of clear and it is looking really, really good. It really brought out the metallic in here. It looks really nice. Once this is buffed, it'll look really good as well. Um, I did run into an issue right there. You can see it got a little bit of drip in the clear coat. That was from the can actually dripping on the paint, on like on the panel. So uh, I think we're just gonna have to address that with a little bit of sandpaper and buffing afterwards. Um, I got it there, and then I accidentally got two on this one as well. Uh, I think it was when I was flipping the can a little bit more sideways than vertically. Um, it would just kind of collect and then drip onto it from the can. So it's pretty annoying, but other than that, it's looking really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a little bit of time to firm up and then we'll move them to a different room so we can start on the bumper. All right, guys, you can see that we have the bumper all cleaned up and ready to go. I went ahead and wiped it down with some ice purple alcohol, and then I went ahead and hit it with the tack cloth, so it is looking really, really good. Um, you can see I've got it propped up right now. So we're gonna go ahead and hit it with some plastic adhesion promoter. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna melt that top layer of plastic and allow it to really bond well with the color. Um, reading the instructions on the back says to do two to three coats, allowing three minutes between each coat. And then within 10 minutes of the last coat, you've got to put on the top color. So this is going to be done pretty fast. I'm probably not going to make a video in between, um, but we're going to go ahead and put this on and then go ahead and hit it up with some color and it should turn out really, really good. All right, we got the first layer of paint down. Um, I've let it dry for about an hour because uh, the thing that I really noticed was all those little divots from, you know, road, uh, rash and like chips and all that, you know, it's really making, see if I can get a better view, um, it's really making a lot of little imperfections in the paint. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just like on the other ones, I'm gonna go ahead and try wet sanding a little bit. Um, there's a lot right here, so maybe I'll try a little area just like right there, try to wet sand it down and see if that helps at all, see if any of that buildup from the paint um, can be torn back down um, and then help it flatten out. I don't know if putting a filler like primer on this would've been good. I don't know if filler primer would adhere to the plastic as well as the paint does. They say that the, uh, the adhesion promoter is just exactly for the top color. Um, so I don't really know what the best way to get around this is. I think in the future, if I have to, I'll go ahead and sand it all back down again, um, put on like body filler and then, you know, sand it all down. It's just a lot of really tiny little pieces. So it'd be a lot of work to kind of fill those. Um, but that might just be the way to do it, is to put on uh, like a filler primer and then sand it all back down um, till you get to the bare plastic again with just little pieces of primer filling all of those tiny little chips. So, I don't know, I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand, see what happens, and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, so I went ahead and started wet sanding, um, but a lot of these little places I noticed right up here in front, um, because these are all from rocks and everything hitting the car, um, they're all cavities, they're you know indents. So there's not a lot of high points. Um, the sanding didn't do too much because uh, there really just isn't a lot of plastic sticking up that is grabbing and causing a dent, it's being pushed in. So I think um, now that I've got one layer of color down, um, I'm fairly confident that it's going to adhere to the plastic fairly well. So I actually have a can of the, uh, the high fill primer, high fill sandable primer. Um, I think I'm gonna use this, and I think I'm gonna go over, see if I can fill in, um, specifically just on the front, right here, um, and then just all along this front area right here. These are where there's a lot of big cavities, and I think I might be able to fill with this primer, um, and then do another layer of color on top of that. I do have enough color, thankfully, um, so I won't be too upset if I uh, have to do the whole thing in primer. But I'll go ahead, 
prime it up so that we get a nice fill in all those places and then sand it back down again. That way I'm not getting too much primer on it. I just want enough to fill really. I don't want to have to, you know, do it. I mean, I don't think it'd be an issue, but I just want to make sure it's nice and smooth because um, high fill primer does like to stick to all bumps. Um, so even though it fills really well, it also creates a lot of bumps on its own. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, hit it with a layer of the primer, see how it comes out. We're gonna go ahead and sand it back down again and then do another layer of color and hopefully that helps to minimize a lot of this cavitation. Um, I think in a flat color, you probably wouldn't notice this as bad, but in a metallic, um, especially, especially on the fenders that I was doing earlier, I was noticing um, just because of the way the metallic reflects light, you can see imperfections really, really easily. So I think all of these are gonna be super visible if I went ahead and continued the way I am currently. Um, so I think filling these in as best as we can, even if it doesn't completely eliminate them, is going to give it the best look possible. All right, guys, as you can see, I got primer on everything. I went ahead and put a couple just extra thick coats on uh, the specialty bad areas, which was really just right across the bottom here and right across the top here. It's looking pretty good. Um, I didn't get everywhere super thoroughly. You can see down here is a lot more color, um, but I think it's looking pretty good. Um, pretty much the whole thing needs to be sanded down. It's gonna be quite a bit of sanding, um, but I think, because um, the way the high fill prime works is it just kind of builds around any irregularities. So all these little areas here, um, even though they're built up, they should sand down pretty smoothly. Uh, I did get a drop right there because it just dripped off the edge of the can like always. Um, and then I actually hit the can right there. Um, but so this isn't an area of concern. So I think if we sand down to that level, it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, I think it's gonna be a lot of sanding. I'm gonna do wet sanding. Um, that's what it recommends. Um, the, sand, the sandable primer says that they recommend using 600 wet sanding. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, sand it down. All I really need to do is get back to the color. I don't need to go through the color. Um, and really it's just these areas here that were really important. Um, so unfortunately I gotta do a lot of sanding for just a lot of very small pieces. But I think regardless, we're going to end up, end up with a lot smoother of a finish, even if it doesn't cover all the big holes. Um, there's still a big one kind of right there. I don't know if that one is gonna be filled completely. Um, but other than that, I think it's gonna be pretty good. So, sand it down, see how it looks. All right, as you can see, there is residue all over this still. I just finished wet sanding. Um, I was gonna go ahead and take this all the way back down to the color, uh, but then I realized leaving the build on it like this, as long as it was smooth, would actually yield the best results because anything that is actually raised is gonna get filled in um, as best as it can, at least with the uh, few mils of uh, paint that's on there. But uh, I went ahead and I started at 600 grit. Um, I did this area right here and then I started, you can see it's a little bit brighter right there. I realized it was gonna burn through that pretty quick with 600, so I went ahead and jumped back to the 1200 I was using earlier. Um, and because it's wet sanding, it's pretty easy to um, do more work wet sanding than just regular 1200 on its own. So I did the whole thing in 1200 um, with high fill primer, like I was saying earlier, you wanna be careful to knock it all down because it likes to build. It actually creates a pretty rough texture. Um, so you wanna go ahead and make sure everything is knocked down really well. Otherwise you're gonna get that texture when you're done painting. Um, I believe it only recommends 600 for the initial sand. Um, and then anything higher than that is afterwards, um, like how I recommended a thousand when we were doing paint corrections. So um, I gotta go ahead and wipe all this residue off. Um, I use just pretty much a wet paper towel and then I go back, hit it with a tack cloth once I'm done. Um, but it should leave us with a smoother finish. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be the smoothest, um, but it's gonna yield us the best results. If we did this a couple times and built up a decent layer of uh, primer on here, we might be able to get rid of all of the imperfections. Uh, let me see. You can still see imperfections up here where I think these were high spots and I knocked the tops off of them. Um, so you can see the black underneath, the black plastic. Um, but I think this is gonna be fine. Um, I don't have enough primer to do a whole nother coat of this, unfortunately. Um, so this is just gonna be where I leave it. Um, but like I said earlier in the future, if I wanted to go ahead and sand this down and then put another coat on and then, um, you know, go through this process again, it wouldn't be that hard. Um, this is pretty clean, pretty straight uh, material. Um, it would just, you know, take a day. So I think I'm gonna go ahead, wipe all this off, put some color down, and it should look 
at least as good as it was before, but if not, there's gonna definitely be improvements. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Let's jump to that. All right, guys. Well, I got everything kind of painted up and let it dry overnight. I'm going ahead and reassembling it today. Um, I went ahead and put a fender on, and uh, as you can probably see, the color match is uh, not perfect. Let's see if I can set back a little bit. The rest of the paint is a little bit more yellow um, versus the new paint is kind of a darker, kind of colder um, metallic. It's not super obvious, but it is, you know, in my opinion, you know, pretty obvious. So that is a bummer. Um, I thought that this would be better color match and they do give you cards to go ahead and spray a test spot before. Um, but I told myself whether or not it matches or not, I'm still gonna be doing it. Um, so it is unfortunate that it wasn't a perfect color match. I guess I'll have to try a different vendor. Um, but regardless, I think it'll still be pretty good once it's all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble everything and we'll see how it all looks put back together. All right, guys, well, pretty much everything is put back together. And, you know, for what it is, it's looking pretty good. Obviously, the paint color does not match. Um, right here, where there's OEM, not OEM, and then OEM again, is it's super obvious. And then, of course, along the hood lines, where there's, you know, OEM and then non-OEM. Um, but, you know, just for how the paint came out, I'm pretty happy with it. 2K clear is definitely the way to go. Um, I used 1K on all of this and then I didn't really like it. I had one bottle of 2K and I did it on both the fenders and they came out a lot glossier. Um, the front bumper is still 1K, so it's not quite as glossy, but I think that's the way to go in the future. Um, it is, I don't wanna say significantly more expensive, but it's about twice the price if I remember correctly. So, you know, I guess you get what you put into it. Um, I, for all the paint and everything for this, it was about $175. Um, so I think if you went with the 2K clear, it probably would have only bumped you up to about 200, maybe a little over 200. So for a weekend project and, you know, three panels done, um, that's really not that much money. Um, of course you probably could have taken it to a paint shop and had them do the three panels for six to 800, I believe is what I was quoted. So, you know, in the long run, I'm happy I got the experience. Uh, as I always say, guys, I'm a novice painter, so if you have any comments or anything, um, any recommendations for painting stuff like this, definitely drop a comment down below. Um, of, other than, you know, doing a test card first, I should have, you know, just been like, oh, this obviously doesn't match. But regardless, you know, I'm happy with at least it looking semi-close to being complete again. Uh, I hated driving down the road and having a car that was all mismatched. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy with it. As always, guys, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below, and I will respond as best I can. And uh, I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you next time.